First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodesh. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of the Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. Okay, now this is um, pretty much breaking news. All right, it says fuel crisis, government expected to mobilize army as a precaution amid fuel crisis. You know, and the first question that really pops up is, well, a, a, precau a precaution of what? Okay, is there they are they are they anticipating you know uh, chaos because there's gonna the because of this fuel crisis, which you know don't think of it as just affecting you know uh, cars and and uh, you know cars like going to the gas station, but the fuel is also used for uh, a lot of other things, and they know that this thing is is not. It's not a, a light thing. Now, I was going to do a video on an article going into how they're saying that people are panic buying and they're having food shortages and they're having fuel shortages. And I was going to go into as they were the article was mentioning how things are getting more or more dire, more severe, more intense over there in the UK because of this uh, uh, um, fuel, fuel shortage. And in the midst of that, just now, they just... Uh, this breaking news just came out, which that's why all you see right here is just this piece of information, which in, in over time, more information is going to come out. But it says the government is expected to mobilize the army as a precaution amid the ongoing queues, uh, queues at petrol stations around the country, according to a Whitehall, uh, Whitehall source. So it's getting that bad that they're, they're about to mobilize the army. Now, when you mobilize the army, what 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 are you what are you cautioning against? Okay, whatever it is, it has to be something that can can really you know this has to be one of those situations that can go bad. You know, it can go really really bad, and it can go really really bad, really really fast. All right, now I'm gonna see if I can find an article mentioning it. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, first, let me see what it just says here. UK could ask soldiers to deliver fuel as service stations run dry. <laughs> okay, and they're 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 also mentioning uh them having a trucker, uh trucker shortage. <laughs> so it's not really looking too good over there. But this is from Reuters. dot com. It says fuel pumps run dry in British cities, sowing uh supply chain chaos. You know, as as the cold the colder uh, um, times approach. Now, as you can see, the main bullet points: you have a trucker shortage uh, strains British economy. Demand will return to normal in coming days, which is what they say. Um, so now let's go down here. It says uh, gas station pumps ran dry in British cities on Monday, and but just today, and vendors rationed sales as a shortage of truckers. Strained supply chains to breaking point. <laughs> it says a post-Brexit shortage of lorry drivers as the C-19P eases has uh, eases has shown has sown chaos through British supply chains in everything from f uh, food to fuel. So, you know, things are really starting to pick up over there. Raising the specter of disruptions and price rises in the run-up to Christmas. Drivers queued for hours to fill their cars at petrol stations that were still selling fuel, albeit often rationed. There were also calls for National Health Service staff and other emergency workers to be given priority. Pumps across British cities were either closed or had signs saying fuel was unavailable on Monday. A Reuters reporter said, with some limiting the amount of fuel each customer could buy. And what's interesting is you had something similar like this take place in the U.S. just a couple months ago. But they, they said this um, what happened in the U.S. was because of uh, the cyber uh, attack or so, which shut down uh, a colonial pipeline, I believe. And you had people going crazy, bugging out, getting into fights, you know, which it came back after a couple of days or so. But over here, we, we keep hearing this news. Now, of course, we're going to watch and see what comes of it. But whether, you know, things level out again or they don't, 
we know that at some point down the road very soon, it's going to get uh, much, much worse. Because when you start having these close calls and you start having them uh, uh, um, more often, that is not a good sign. That's a sign of something big about to happen. Now, and when this starts hitting these banks, because what you see is when whenever you have a, a shortage or a threat of a shortage of something, everybody everybody gets desperate. And everybody pretty much thinks the same thing, right? If, if there's some crisis that uh, brings about some turmoil and people start going to the banks, you have bank runs. When people start buying things, you have panic buying. Because a lot of people are, are, are used to following the trend. But these elites are setting up these various uh, uh, countries, which ultimately is the most high, for a very, very chaotic time. A very chaotic time. Now it says the Petrol Retailers Association, which represents the independent fuel retailers, accounting for 65% of all the 8,380 UK four courts, said members had reported that 50% to 90% of pumps were dry in some areas. Um, fuel suppliers said they expected the situation to get back to normal soon. But the interesting thing is now they're saying that they might or, or they're getting ready to roll out the army. But why is that? Why are you expected to roll out the army here? They said that things are supposed to get back to normal soon. And these 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 uh, uh, um, these uh, elites are looking for any reason to to have these various governments declare martial law. OK, any reason. Even if they have to orchestrate it. Uh, I'm going to just skim through a bit. It says, as many cars are now holding more fuel than usual, we expect that demand will return to nor to its normal levels in the coming days, easing pressures on fuel uh, station forecourts. We would encourage everyone to buy fuel as they usually would. And that's the thing. When, when, when people start panicking, it's not about what you advise. The scriptures say in the book of 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, that the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So people are going to do what they think is right in their mind. Um, now it says, the industry's message echoed the plea from government for people not to panic by. Environment Secretary George Eustace said there was no shortage of fuel and that there were no plans to get the army uh, to drive trucks, though the Ministry of Defense would help with trucker testing. So now if that's the case, and when, when was this article? It said, I think they said this article came out about two. Uh, it was updated three hours ago. But then when you when you come here, this was updated or this came out today. All right. And matter of fact, a couple minutes ago, that breaking news went out. All right. So we're just going to watch and see how it turns out. But we know that this thing, this thing is leading up to uh, that, like we read earlier, a breaking point. They're telling people to, when you tell people don't panic buy, what do you think that's going to make them do? That's going to make them do exactly that. Okay? If you come and you tell somebody, hey, um, the economy is crashing, um, you know, things are getting very bad, it doesn't look like it's going to get good, but don't panic. Do you mean to tell me they're going to just sit there and look at you and not panic? Uh, we're having some shortages. Uh, things are running out in the stores. People are buying everything off the shelves. But please, don't panic. Stop b panic buying. I'm sorry, you just told me that everybody else is buying the stuff off the store. So wait, why should I listen to you? And then I go to the store and it's empty and I'm starving. <laughs> Man, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to a, uh, uh, um, necessities food water shelter transportation people don't you know they don't play with these things there was a video that came out i believe the uh the brother yashalam put it up gms watchman and in the video you see people fighting at a gas station because <laughs> when when uh um when uh hard times come in people's patience run very very thin very thin okay 
So now let's get a couple of precepts. This is the book of Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. It says, The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly. So it, it, it's, it's, it's approaching very, very quickly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. So those that, that are, you know, considered mighty men, when all this hell breaks loose, they're going to be crying bitterly because that's how bad it's going to be. O only those that have the wisdom and knowledge, all right, of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai will be stable. Everybody else, it doesn't matter what your status or your rank or, or what power you think you have. It doesn't matter about any of that. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to bug out because it's going to be too much for their minds to handle, to comprehend without having anything to calm them down or to keep them stable. Verse 15, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress. When there's no food, when there's food shortages, when, when, you know, things are getting difficult, that is trouble. That is distress. When you're having shortages of medical staff, what do you think is going to happen? A lot of these hospitals are going to start having to close. Because the workers are going to be getting overwhelmed. Now they're saying in New York that they're going to start bringing the National Guard to um, to fill up those positions for the hospitals and, you know, stuff like that. Well, soon, well, you might as well just kick out all the regular workers and just fill them with, you know, government agents. At that point, you better make sure you never end up in the hospital. Because the hospital is going to be looking like a military base. <laughs> Now it says, um, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Okay, and that's what's coming to this place, a, a, a destructive time, a very, very destructive time. We're in just in the, the prelims. We're, we're, we're approaching that time very quickly, and you're, you're starting to see how all these little things here and there are going to come together to fuel to fuel the chaos in that time. And the Lord is going to have prophecy fan those flames. Verse 16, a day, of, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities, against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men, blind men having no sense of direction, not knowing what to do, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. So as all these things are taking place, these people are they're not going to know what to do. They're just going to be catching the hell. They're going to be reacting to what's happening, but with no mental stability of understanding what exactly is happening. So you best believe that civil unrest, that's, that's right around the corner. Okay? The evictions. When, when these things happen, it takes a while before the, the full effects start getting felt. Now, I'm going to move on real quick to the book of Isaiah 24, verse, um, verse 7. It says, The new wine mourneth, the wine, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. Why are they going to sigh? Because all the merry and the joy and the mirth is going to be gone. Verse 8, The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoiceth, uh, rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. So, you know, for those that, that try to uh, um, distract themselves from what's going on, that's not going to be a possibility. You're going to be forced to face the reality. Okay? It says here, the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. There is a crying for wine in the streets. And that's this truth. People are going to be looking for this truth because this truth is what's going to give you those answers. It says, all joy is darkened, the mirth of the land is gone. So all that, because look, man, you could, you could one week, you could be having a good time going to these clubs, partying, you know, enjoying quote unquote life. And the next week, everything could be changed. You won't have access to those things and you'll have much bigger problems to worry about. And that's what's coming to this place, man. The cold, hard, harsh reality. And it can't come soon enough. So we're going to keep our eyes open, you know, and see what's going on there, how it escalates, how it unfolds, and soon what's going to be happening here.
So with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.